My dear friends, welcome to Rajasekhar classes on Applied Data Science with Python. This is lecture number 223. In this lecture, we will try to understand introduction to principal component analysis. Why do we use principal component analysis that is PCA? One of the most important applications of PCA is for speeding up. It is basic purpose is speeding. I can say like this speeding up machine learning, machine learning algorithms, machine learning algorithms. PCA is fundamentally, I can say principal component analysis is fundamentally a dimensionality, a dimensionality, dimensionality reduction algorithm, dimensionality reduction algorithm, isn't it? Dimensionality reduction algorithm, but it can also be useful as a tool for it can be used, it is used as a tool for visualization. Visualization. It is a tool for visualization. Even it is used for noise. Noise filtering. You can make use this one for noise filtering. I, even it is useful feature, feature extraction feature extraction and engineering. We will try to understand these one by one. I can say PCA is, I can say PCA is unsupervised, unsupervised, unsupervised non-parametric algorithm, non-parametric, unsupervised non-parametric non-parametric data science algorithm or some statistical algorithm I can say. What is this supervised and unsupervised? What does it mean? What is the meaning of super? I, I will spend a lot of time on supervised and unsupervised algorithms. Time being let me say supervised algorithm uh, let me say supervised algorithm work for labeled data. Your supervised algorithm work for labeled data. That's important here. It is work for labeled data. What does it mean? What is the meaning of labeled data? If I say an ordered pair x comma y, your x is input variable. This x is input variable or I can say this one is feature input variable feature. This y is known as respond variable. I can say this is respond variable. Respond variable. Otherwise, I can say this this, this y is a way of, uh, I, I can say uh, y is I can say label. Even you can say it is a label. Isn't it? If you, have, if you have label for each input variable, then I can say it is label data. For example, just see here, you have got label for all of them. Just see this for example, what is the label for this particular image? Dog is label. What is the label for this one? Dog, dog is label. This for this is image, cat is label. For this image, cat is label, isn't it? For this image, 8 LB, 18 LBs is label. This one, 14 LBs is label. These are labels. I can say these are tags. I can say label data is data that comes with a tag, isn't it? All these are cat is a tag, cat is a dog, dog is a tag, 18 LBs is a tag, isn't it? That comes with a tag like name. This, this is name, isn't it? Tag like name, type. Otherwise, I can, it may come with number. And unlabeled data is data that comes with no tag. Here you don't have any tag. Here you don't have any tag. This is known as unlabeled data. 
isn't it i will spend a lot of time on this particular supervised and unsupervised algorithms in i can say pca is a, is an unsupervised non parametric statistical technique primarily used for dimensionality reduction in machine learning in short supervised algorithm in short supervised algorithm work for labeled data means this your supervised algorithm works for for this type of labeled data whereas pca is unsupervised algorithm it can work for unlabeled uh, 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 unlabeled data is it's unsupervised algorithm an unsupervised learning algorithm isn't it an unsupervised learning means you will have x but you don't have any corresponding y you don't have labels that is a, an unsupervised learning algorithm such as clustering clustering is an example for uh, example for an unsupervised algorithm clustering and pca principal component analysis find some pattern and uh, regularities without direct supervision isn't it that is unsupervised learning algorithm i will discuss what is unsupervised basically time being just understand that pca is unsupervised uh, non parametric algorithms i i will also discuss what is non parametric algorithm time being just understand it is unsupervised non parametric uh, learning algorithm i can say let, let, let i can say like this pca is let me say like this pca is one of the most basic probably one of the simplest i can say pca is one of the simplest dimensionality reduction technique i can say like this dimensionality simplest dimensionality reduction technique isn't it this point is important isn't it yes one of the simplest dimensionality reduction technique of course dimensionality reduction this particular concept has got multiple applications this multiple applications we will discuss this what are the applications of dimensionality reductions in this series of uh, lectures basically what it does is if you if your data points let me say if your data point lies in d dimensions let me say your data point xi belongs to rd rd means it is d dimensional data point then what your data points d dimensional data point let me write like this d dimensions dimensionality reduction means you have dimension d dimensionality data it will transform into d dash dimensions that you must understand you will transform into d dash dimensions what is the relation between d dash and d such that your d dash is less than d then i can say then this is called dimensionality reduction if you consider our mnist data set we already discussed this mnist data set in our previous lectures what is the dimension of this mnist data set you have mnist data set otherwise let me rewrite this one your mnist mnist data set what is the dimension 28 by 28 means which has got 784 dimensions isn't it what we did you can make use you, you can make use pca principal component analysis and you can reduce this seven if you if you want to convert this data into two dimensions you can convert into two dimensions by using pca why you are converting into two dimensions so that you can visualize this data easily otherwise is it is it is difficult to visualize 784 dimensional data if you convert this data this 784 dimension data that is mnist data set into two dimensions and visualize this data we saw one visualization where all zero just try to uh, recall that uh, lecture number i think it's lecture number 2 21 just refer lecture number 221 what we did we saw 
one visualization where all zeros are grouped together all zeros are grouped together all ones are grouped together we have given color coding isn't it therefore what it what what's the basic idea this mnist data set which has got 784 dimensions will be converted into two dimensional data set with the help of principal component analysis and you can visualize that one without any difficulty isn't it if you have high dimensional data which you want to visualize that's important if you have high dimensional data which you want to visualize your pair plots we already discussed pair plots pair plots pair plots and scatter plots scatter plots it is difficult it is difficult to visualize data high dimensional data it is difficult to visualize high dimensional data with the help of pair plots or scatter plots they don't work we can always convert this high dimensional data into two dimensions or three dimensions so that you can apply visualization isn't it we will see uh, it has got so many other applications as i told you we will discuss in future classes for now we will mostly use it for visualization i can say i can repeat this one uh, like this if you have a data with the d dimensions and you are transforming it with the d dash dimensions d dash dimensions such that such that such that your d dash is less than d isn't it if we, from visualization we, we understand more about d dash when d dash equal 10 if if your d dash is is equal to 10 you can't visualize if your d dash is equal to 10 dimensions you can't visualize isn't it 10 dim pci is therefore usually we will convert this d dimensional data into 2d or 3d why because visualizing 2d or 3d data is is very easy in the case of M, mnist data set what we did we converted into 2d and we we visualized this we visualized it isn't it pca i can say pca is one of the simplest this one i can say pca is one of the simplest very very simplest very very fundamental technique very very fundamental very very fundamental technique technique fundamental technique which is extensively used which is extensively extensively used extensively used in used in machine learning isn't it used in machine learning this is one of the uh, i can say this is one of the actual machine learning techniques which is often used for dimensionality reduction which in turns used for visualization so why uh, why because higher dimensional data uh, for higher dimensional data it is difficult to visualize so we will see pca in next few lectures what is its geometric interpretation what uh, how where does it work and where does it not work what is the mathematics behind pca i will discuss in next few lectures this this lecture is basic intention of this lecture to uh, to explain the purpose of pca just go through this lecture it is simple and straightforward thank you very much